Something interesting that arises from the fact that the universe expands is a redshift due to the expanding space. So what I'd like to do is first of all talk to you about that um, and show you a little bit about how we can use this. Um, what we've been talking about before was the fact that the universe seems to be expanding. And that is because of, well, the fact that we can see almost everything that we can, uh, almost every galaxy that we look at seems to be redshifted. And that tells us that things are going away from us. Now, it might be interesting to take a look at why that is, or sort of what that could actually do for us. So the very fact that the universe is expanding means that the space between things increases. Okay, so the space between things, when I say things, I mean galaxies mainly, uh, increases. We're talking about large scale structure here. So the very fact that the space between things increases tells us something really interesting, I think. So let's say we have a galaxy. So here's the galaxy. It's doing, let's say it's just a spiral galaxy here. Now this galaxy has some light that's emitted from it. So let's say the light comes off uh, and the light goes sort of this way. So some light goes from the galaxy and it comes towards us. So here's going to be Earth here. Of course, I've drawn us the same size as a galaxy, which isn't true at all. But let's just say this is us right here and we're seeing the light here. But while the light was trying to go from that galaxy to us, the space between the galaxy and us has increased. Okay, so the distance right here is different. So you see what started off, see the light that actually started off going, you know, maybe let's say this right here was the wavelength of a light. Let's say this right here was the light sort of emitted. You know, this is like the, the light was trying to do this, which means let's say from the distance from here to here, if we measured that in meters, that would be the wavelength, which we give lambda. But of course, because the space between these two increases, what that does is that that literally increases the size of this wave. So that means the light, you know, from this wave maybe goes like this by the time it reaches us, something maybe like this. So I'll say maybe it received. So this is because the distance, you know, from this galaxy to Earth, you know, when this, this light tried to travel from the galaxy to the Earth, while it's been traveling, the galaxy, you know, the, the space between these has actually increased. By increasing the space, what you do is you stretch this out. So you see this right here, it gets stretched out. Uh, maybe I'll do it in a different color right here. So you notice this one right here, this is the new lambda. That's the received wavelength. And this one is larger than this one. That's the, the point I wanted to make. So because of that then, um, we could say that the received light has a longer wavelength. And if it has a longer wavelength, remember, larger values of wavelength, if you remember your different sort of, um, like when we were doing a spectrum of things, if this is lambda, things over to the right, for example, like this right here might be red, that's a larger wavelength, and something, let's say, that's blue, that'd be a smaller wavelength. In fact, the wavelength that we would be looking at, this might be like 633 nanometers, and blue might be something like um, 488 nanometers. Those are the common sort of laser ones, at least. Uh, you could have anything in the middle. So the very fact that the wavelength increased, we say then that the wavelength went from some value to something that's larger, and larger wavelengths, we call them redder. This is a bit of a misnomer because something could be leaving, so some, something could be emitted with a wavelength that's already way past red. It just goes even more past red. So the, the important thing here is that the received light has a longer wavelength. And we say then that it is red shifted. Okay, so the very fact that the light went and had a longer wavelength from what was emitted to what we receive, we call that red shifted. And what does that mean for us? I mean, why is this helpful? Well, what we can do then is we just measure the red shifted light, or let's say we measure the red shift. In other words, you know, how much, how much the uh, wavelength changes. So if we measure this, 
this redshift, how much the wavelength changes. That can tell us about the, well, the universe's history. So it tells us about the universe's history. And it can also tell us about the speed. So it turns out the redshift also tells us something about speed. And so then what we can do, we can then write this really important and very useful equation. And so delta lambda over lambda, um, that's going to be, well, not quite, but approximately equal to V over C. This equation here is really useful. So maybe we'd better define things. Delta lambda, actually before we define that, let's just define a few others. So we've got V, that's the speed. And we actually call it the recession speed. Maybe I'll write that down instead here. Because we're implying that galaxies are going away from us. They're receding from us. So the re recession speed, uh, and it's usually of the galaxy. I mean, these are usually large scale structures here, things that are really, really far away. This could be in meters per second. It could also be in kilometers per second. In fact, that's a common one. Well, C is just the speed of light in a vacuum, we're assuming. And that means uh, that would also be in meters per second. And remember, C equals 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now we have lambda. That's the emitted wavelength. And the emitted wavelength is going to be measured in meters. And delta lambda, remember what delta normally means. This means a change in wavelength. So in this case, it's the difference. So it's the difference between the observed and the emitted wavelength. Difference between observed and emitted wavelength. And of course, that's going to be measured in uh, meters as well. And so, because we have this, then we can actually use this in order to do some real stuff with galaxies. So here's an example. Let's say we take a spectrum. This is actually something very similar to what we had to do in one of my courses uh, in astrophysics. This is one of our sort of uh, goals. We actually took a spectrum of a galaxy and we were looking at hydrogen alpha lines. Now, it's not so important to know what hydrogen alpha actually means, but it is one of the transitions of hydrogen atom. So if you look at the hydrogen atom and you look at its energy levels, it's one of the transitions. It's called H alpha. But this line normally, like in a laboratory, um, here on Earth, you know, when you're going, no, while well, you're not moving, the wavelength is going to be 656.3 nanometers. But you observe it instead at 661.5. So the question is, what is the galaxy's recession speed? In other words, how fast is it going? Well, we can use this handy dandy equation that I just gave you. So that's really lame. I promised myself I wouldn't say that word a long time ago, but there you go. Handy dandy is a bit lame, huh? All right, so <laughs> delta lambda over lambda is approximately equal to V over C. And if that's the case, then, well, let's figure this out. So we have our um, delta lambda. Now, you might think, ooh, I have to convert this all to meters. And normally you do. But because I'm doing a ratio of a quantity divided by something of its same size, I can get away with not converting these. In other words, I can leave them in nanometers. The reason I can do that is just because I've got a ratio. It's like saying lambda over lambda. So if I had meters over meters, it would be the same thing as saying centimeters over centimeters or nanometers over nanometers. So only because of that can I actually be sloppy here. If you want, you can always try converting this right here to meters. I mean, keep in mind, this is 656.3 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. That's what this really is. Or you could say, well, yeah. And then this right here would be 661.5 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So if you really wanted, you could. You could just convert them to meters and then do it. But what I'm going to do then is show you that we can be a little bit sloppy because we're using the same sort of units. And delta lambda, well, that's the difference between the observed and the emitted. So in this case, then, I'm going to say, well, it's going to be, let's see, 661.5 
minus 656.3 and all that's going to be divided by the original wavelength which is 656.3 now these of course are all in nanometers but because of that then this will all work out and that will equal v over c of course so then if i do that well i better get out my calculator and i need that ratio so i need to say uh, 661.5 minus 656.3 enter and I'll do that answer divided by 656.3 enter so I get this number a very very small number okay so I get 0 0.0079 something like that well then what I can do if I want to take V I just have to multiply that by you know I just have to multiply the C over so I take this answer and I multiply it by C because see if I want to get V by itself I just have to multiply the C to both sides so multiplying the C up here it makes it C over C that disappears that means it becomes a C on the left side because of that I just multiply this by 3 times 10 to the 8 and I end up with this number that's my speed now this may seem a little bit weird, so let's just take a look at this. This is 2.4 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 2.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So V equals 2.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. That's what we have. Or you could say this is this is 2.4 million meters per second. Or you could say that would be 2,400 kilometers per second right because if I do that right there I have to take away uh, three decimals um, so that would be 10 to the 3 and 2.4 times 10 to the 3 is 2400 but this is normally the way we would do it but you could also say this is 2400 kilometers every second that's how fast this galaxy is going away from us this is a fairly common recession speed this isn't this isn't that sort of difficult or weird or anything even though it seems really fast but the universe is expanding quite quickly so i hope that that shows uh, a practical example of how we can deal with the fact that the universe expands and it redshifts these wavelengths and from that we can actually then use this equation in order to get the recession speed of galaxies and all we have to do is know that we're looking for a certain um, wavelength and if we detect it somewhere different than where we expect it to be, then we can then find the speed 